So I'll start on uh, some antibiotic cases with you. And this really is, is where I'm going through. I'm going to talk about uh, some empiric therapy and then uh, start with empiric and talk about uh, using culture and susceptibility results. And if I have some time, I have just some culture and susceptibility results. So th this is not exactly new information. This is more sit back and uh, enjoy yourself as much as you can seeing slides of infected animals uh, <coughs> and uh, just kind of to let you see some application of how we do some of these things. And <coughs> uh, these are cases that I've collected over the years, uh, some of which I'll comment on some things that uh, I don't agree with that could have been done a little differently. Uh, realize that I wasn't there making the decision in a lot of these cases. Some of them I, wa were, uh, I was, but oftentimes I'm not. So uh, I'm not trying to say anything specifically to criticize anyone. So if you recognize this case, you know, don't go run into a clinician saying, well, Dr. Langston said you really screwed that one up. Uh, um, so uh, just bear that in mind. So a few to start with just on the empiric side. Uh, this is a horse, uh, obviously, <laughs> with a uh, left hock joint infection. Yes? I wish I could turn the lights out over this thing. Uh, for a while now, I can either do all bright or dim. I can't do anything in between. If you know how, come feel free to press the button. That's all dim, but <laughs> that works, okay. Whatever works. Besides, since this is kind of for your own edification, uh, I can't see you as well. Um, so you can see the, the swollen um, um, uh, hawk here. And this is, is your typical K-pen and genomycin. Uh, I could go down in the clinic now and, and probably 70% of the horses down there would be on this combination. And it's a, an excellent combination. Uh, <clears throat> two things I wanted to remind you about. Uh, one is to, uh, typically we give these extra labelly and we give them IV and catheters. Uh, we could use procaine pen, but the horses get needle shy. Uh, from the IM injections. So we use K-pen, potassium pen, and go IV. Again, if you give this too fast, the potassium content can cause some cardiac arrhythmias. So we give that as a slow push. Likewise, genomycin is a little confusing depending on what bottle of genomycin you're looking at. The veterinary approved genomycin is approved for IM use. If you, a lot of practitioners, if you pick up, it will say for IV use. If it says IV use, that is a human genomycin. Now what you don't know is if you got the label insert from that human genomycin, it would say for IV use, dilute in 500 mils of saline and infuse over 30 minutes. All right, so the point again is you can cause on rare, rare, rare occasions a neuromuscular blockade with genomycin. So again, you give this as a relatively slow push. And ideally, we stagger the genomycin away from the beta-lactam because of their chemical incompatibility, where they're not simultaneously given, okay? Uh, at least ideal. The other thing that's important in any septic arthritis is to flush the joint. Uh, <laughs> not only are the bacteria themselves in the joint causing problems, but the inflammatory cells associated with the septic arthritis are attacking the cartilage as well. So we usually will, will tap these, uh, and you have your choice. You can use a single needle, and I say needle, you put a catheter in these typically, uh, and you flush in with sterile saline and you drain out, you flush in and you drain out. Probably a little better is to put uh, two catheters in, one to go in and then another to simultaneously can, uh, uh, drain. And you uh, flush very well. 
And a lot of practitioners will finish up with the aminoglycoside as an injection into the joint last thing. So they'll inject genomycin or amicacin uh, into the joint as the last thing before they pull the catheters. This is a little foal with failure of passive transfer. Uh, sodium ampicillin and amicacin, so again, beta-lactam, aminoglycoside combination, uh, really good combination. The point I want to make here is the failure of passive transfer. Uh, they're using pretty broad-spectrum four-quadrant antibiotic coverage to protect the foal until it can develop antibodies or otherwise be protected. Uh, you cannot just cover with antibiotics and allow the animal to develop its own antibodies, though. You've got to provide passive immunity. So you're going to come in with plasma transfusions, ideally hyperimmune plasma transfusions. And <laughs> we used to say uh, 20 mils per kilogram of plasma. That's a starting point, but in my experience, most do not get acceptable IgG uh, levels immunoglobulin levels from that dose uh, is some multiple of that. So you keep giving uh, plasma transfusions until you get the immunoglobulin content up to an acceptable level. Because if you just rely on antibiotics, I guarantee you something will eventually move in and kill the animal that's resistant to whatever you're using uh, before it develops its own uh, innate immunity. Uh, this is a probable Rhodococcus equi foal. Not much to talk about there. Uh, you know this pretty much. Clarithromycin and rifampin being added. Remember the rifampin will discolor the urine. So if you're dealing with an owner, make sure they're aware. And for your text too, to know that a little uh, pink colored urine is not necessarily abnormal. Uh, you don't want to arbitrarily dismiss this. Uh, uh, just say it's nothing. Uh, you want to check and make sure it's not hematuria, but certainly would be normal uh, on an animal with rifampin. Okay, this is a horse with myositis. Okay, and uh, as I recall, probably this horse got a IM banamine injection. This is up on the uh, animal. Um, banamine is approved for IM use, and banamine is flu nixin and NSAID. But you'll see most equine practitioners only give it IV. Um, it's not a high incidence of infection from IM injection, but it occurs enough to be a problem. And we don't know why this is, whether it's setting up a microenvironment that the bacteria, and usually it's an anaerobe, uh, that the bacteria will grow in or whether or not they're carrying something in with them. But equine practitioners have gotten a little leery of IM banamine. Okay. So uh, this again is on your typical genomyce and KPN administration. But they've gone ahead and fenestrated. When I talked about fenestrating in the case of black leg, this is one where they're fenestrating. And again, trying to get this necrotic uh, exudate uh, to drain out of the, the lesion and speed healing in doing so. So this was a foal um, with a septic physitis. The physis, of course, is the growth plate of the bone. But whenever there's a septicemia, this is another site uh, in, uh, in young animals that may become infected. And remember that in most species, we try to avoid chloramphenicol early in life because their liver isn't developed well enough to handle it. But foals are the exception. Foals are born with um, a pretty competent uh, liver function, uh, reaches near adult in about three days. So this was certainly an appropriate uh, treatment in this particular foal. This is a horse with pleuropneumonia. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this would typically uh, go on, well, you can see it here. It was on metronidazole, genomycin, and ceftiofur. 
Now, the metronidazole would have been a good addition to a pleural pneumonia anyway because they have bacterial fragilis sometimes. But particularly because they opted for ceftiofur instead of penicillin, uh, ceftiofur will miss your clostridia, so the metronidazole was a good combination. So being the great clinicians they are, they did a culture. It grew a lactobacillus, which is a non-pathogen, so that's why that's crossed out. That's just contaminant. Uh, but you see, everything is susceptible, okay? So um, <clears throat> you might say, well, I wasted a culture there, and, and the answer is no, you didn't. If you had not taken a culture, you would have had to continue with the three-way combo, which I priced it out. That was costing about $1,200 a day to treat that. Uh, going with potassium penicillin as the sole agent got it down to about $300 a day. Uh, still expensive, but uh, a quarter of what it was without. So again, culture and susceptibility can actually save you money instead of just costing you money. 